All right, y'all. So I'm back with my little wig that I washed and I blew dry and I flat ironed. Hello. And I have some hair that I'm going to add to this wig to help it get a little bit fuller. This is some hair that I had a long time ago. It matches really closely with the hair. Like, look at the color. It's about the same. So, I'm just gonna be showing you guys how you can add tracks to a wig. Um, you can buy a bundle from the hair store or you can, um, you can order some hair offline to match a wig. If it's a straight wig, you can look for Body Wave or Brazilian Straight, and it usually will be a good match. You can see how thin, look, how, look at this. You see how you can see the white of the styrofoam head? It's very thin. What you wanna do when you're adding tracks to the wig is you wanna line up the track that you're adding with the track of the existing wig. So essentially, like let's say I want to add this track right here. Whether you're using glue, whether you're sewing, it really don't matter. You want to line the track directly on the existing track like that. You see that? The reason why you want to do that is because by doing that, you're not changing the movement of the wig. So it helps when you line it up because if the hair is set to where you can pull it up in a ponytail, you're not taking that away. But if you sew it in the middle or something, you are risking altering the way that the wig is set up. The part of your needle that's open, looks like that. You wanna put your string through it and run it all the way through but you want to double it like this see how it's two pieces you want to double it and you want to put a knot in the end the reason why you want to knot the end is because when you're sewing if you don't knot the end of it is going to just come all the way through so when adding tracks to your wig you just want to find places where you feel that there's gaps or it looks thin you want to add hair directly in the same place where it looks thin. That's the, the trick. That's the key. That's what you're doing. Um, so you want to get the tip of the track and you want to put your needle through. You can use a straight needle like me or you can use a curved needle. It's curved and it makes it easier to sew it for some people. For me, it's easier for me to sew with a straight needle. You stick it in through the weft, which the way I cut mine, is like my weft is trying to come apart right there. So I'm actually gonna do it a little in the center of where it's not coming apart. You're gonna pull that through. And then you're gonna go in through the side where you did the first time and, and do it again. And make sure you're going through the weft, y'all. Don't sew through the hair. You want to sew through the weft of that hair. That's two times, and I'm going to do one more. And what that does is it creates a knot so that that track does not move. It does not go anywhere. Now that you got your track in place um, or knotted to where it's not going to go anywhere, I'm going to line it up with the track on the wig. All right. This is where what it looks like right now. Thin, right? This is what it's gonna look like with that hair added. See it? Taking it off. I'm gonna sew it across, okay? What I do, I just line it up. Again, it's important to line it up to where it's directly on the track. Like I cannot emphasize that enough.
Baby, can you get that for me? Now, I'm just gonna continue sewing where I was at. I was on the opposite side, so I'm going to line it up and again. Like, when I'm saying line it up on the track, this is where I've been sewing so far, right here. You can kind of tell the difference. Where it's sewn, it looks fuller now. Where it's not sewn, you can see holes because this wig just, it was thin. So, I'm lining up the, top of my track that's right here with the line of the track that already came with the wig so that when it's done when it's done all this exposed part will basically look like this so i'm just going in with this needle and i'm sewing them tracks together Okay, and like I said before, you might need bobby pins or T-pins or just whatever you can get your hands on to like keep the other part of the hair that's in the, in the wig out your way so you can see what you're doing. And see, now I'm on this side. So like when I'm on the other side of it, I don't know if this makes sense. I'm gonna tilt it like this. But when you're on the other side of your wig and you've put it through, you can go up under and go back through like this. And you could just, you know, if you, the hair gets in there, you could just use your fingers and get it out like that. But it's an elastic band right there. So I'm gonna actually bring my needle up underneath the elastic band on the other side of it. Cause I don't, like I said before, you don't wanna alter the um, movement of the wig. And so things like elastic bands that they put in, those are the type of things that um, allow your wig to move and be pulled up into a ponytail or, um, pull to the side, etc. So you don't want to mess that up if that's in there a certain way. So now
I got the the uh, track added how I want it, and I think I'm gonna end it right there. Now, before I cut it, I'm gonna go ahead and like try to detangle the root, and I will go in and flat iron um, this track that I added so that it blends, cause. The quality of the hair I added is much better than the hair that I, um, that the hair that is in the wig. This is some, uh, I think like a loose wave, body wave hair texture. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add more hair. I just wanted to show y'all like how that looks. It looks so pretty with this extra hair added in there. It's curly. Now I am going to, um, Go in where I'm stopping on that track in the middle. I actually, well, wait a minute. I was going to stop, but it, it looked like I could actually go all the way across the wig with this track. It's just, it's so sad how many gaps are in the wig. Like, you guys, these companies, these companies be skimping. That's all I can say. And see, yeah, this might be a good thing to do. This is probably something I could have told you guys at the beginning, but it's all right. You could do like a knot, and I found this little clip here. All right. So now that I can actually see a little bit better, I'm going to just keep sewing until I run out of room to sew. So that's what it looked like before. Bring it close. Gappy, right? And this is the side that I sewed hair on. You can tell where it's at because it's got like a wave to it. So I'm adding hair, okay? So I'm bringing it through. Bring it through. And there. And then I'm going to go up under. Or go around, rather. The elastic band because you don't want to mess your elastic band up. That's the main thing I've been saying. If you see like where the elastic band is, you don't want to mess it up. So pull that through. Like whip de do. And then you know you get to the opposite side. You can go through through the other side. Like that. And try to hold the hair away. See, like this right here is about to run out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it through. And to be honest, guys, yeah, you can like you can separate and do like your arm will start to get tired, or you might not be able to pull through both tracks together. It really is okay to do that if you need to, you know, just get it through, hold it. You can even hold it on the other side if that helps you. But try not to mess up your your knot of your trizac. I think that's what I did. I just messed something up. Like, what happened? Oh, there it go. I had to pull it tighter. I'm like, wait a minute. That's the only thing. It's like, it's not tighter. Okay. And again, like, okay, right now the needle is under. So I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go behind thing like this to get the angle I'm gonna go through but it's just not right you want to be in the west that's the west okay so now you got this you know I'm trying to get this on the west too there you go now they're both on the west and I'm holding it here because that's how I want it to be and I'm pulling this as tight <laughs> All right, and now I'm back on this side. I'm going to keep practicing. Eventually, your girl going to be able to do her own sewing because that's what I really want to be able to do. Do my own sewing. Ain't going to be able to tell me nothing in. I learn to do my own sewing. Baby. Your girl going to be 
feeling confident at that point about how well I can do hair or whatever. Do hair, do wigs, whatever. Whatever have you. Okay. 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 Okay, I'm gonna pull pull put my thumb on it and I'm gonna pull it under like dots. Yes, okay, there you go, and then go through it real close. Like that's what I'm just trying to say. You wanna go through it close. Like you don't wanna be so far to where it's gappy and it's easy for it to come loose. Like if that's the best advice I can give you is like try to so closely where necessary in some areas of of your unit where you can sew far apart but when you get towards the end you want to go close together because that's going to keep it it's going to make it difficult for your wig to come off it's, it's for, for your tracks to come out basically Yeah, I'm gonna end it like literally like right there on the uh on the west of that thing. You want to make sure you get all this hair that's off on your needle off, cause you do not want, you do not want the hair. Like if you if you see hair and it look like it's on your needle, and it's like from a different section in the in the wig, my advice is to try to get that off because it's gonna be a pain in the ass if you have um like hair from a different section in the wig on your in your like way. I don't know how other way, other way to just say in a way, but it's, yeah, it's essentially it's in a way. So, yeah, just try to bring it back through. And then hold it, hold the other hair out of the way. Yes. Like so. And I'm going to connect this way to this net up here. And I'm going to knot it. And I'm going to go through it again. Okay, and this is the important part. Like, I've already knotted it twice right there. But wherever your track ends so that it lays flat, you want to go through the end of your web two, three, four times. You know, because you don't want your the track to come out. So you keep going through it and going through it until you feel like you you know it ain't going nowhere. And then once you get to, you know, that fourth knot, that's when you can cut it. I would say cut it about like, okay, we got this much string. You want to cut it about there so you can tie it in a knot. So I'm going to use these green scissors right here. I want to cut it, you know, about there. And then I'm going to tie it in a knot. If you don't tie it in a knot, eventually it's going to come loose. So, and you don't want that. You don't want, you don't want it just coming loose on you and you be like, dang, it just came loose. You don't want that. So, I'm just taking the string and I'm tying a knot. We 
because you could just do like you tying shoes a little bit. Like that's the motion. Uh, I know y'all probably can't see it. But I just did it like you tying shoes. Tying shoes. It don't got to be perfect or nothing. Once you tie it a couple of times and you feel confident in how you've tied it, you can cut it so that you don't have that random thread in your wig. Okay, I can't. It's fine. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. It's not going to come loose. I'm, I'm confident that it's not going to come loose. All right, so now you got your track in. And it just looks seamless. It looks great with the with the other hair. Like, what track? So this is like the hair I just put in. Which it wasn't, the hair I put, the hair I sewed in is not even that full. To be clear, it's really not even that full. But it's, it looks fuller with it in here. <laughs> Let me just say that. But you do want to blend, you know, the hair. Like if you put body wave in it's got a wave to it the hair on the wig is not body wave it's straight so you're gonna have to just get your flat iron and, and blend it in make it look more natural make it look more real okay but that's how you add tracks to the hair you know that's how you you make your wig look a little fuller because i know that i was able to achieve the look that i wanted without having to go buy another wig. And in this case, I didn't even have to go buy bundles because these were bundles that I've had sitting in my closet. Cause I haven't really, like since my sister passed, I haven't really gotten sew-ins. To be honest, since she got sick, I haven't really got sew-ins cause she was the one who used to do them. And oh my gosh, that just looks so much better. This is that bootleg comb with a comb with a rat tail be coming out, but it's all right. That's not important. The important thing is just seeing how that just added some fullness. It's just one track, but it just added some fullness to this wig it, that needed it. You know what I'm saying? That wig needed some fullness to her. Way she needed that. Sis needed it, okay? So I'm probably going to add another track um, near the top of the unit somewhere. Like, like I said, you want to clip any other hair out your way right this is the beginning of the hair you're gonna line it up with the track so the track begins here right so you're lining it up directly on the track like this and you're bringing it across like that so that's where i'm adding the track now if we want to go all the way across we can i'm gonna put a bobby pin here to kind of hold that for me so i can see how far um, I can bring this across and I'm just lining it up with the track that's in the wig already, right? To add some more fullness to sis because sis is thin. Now, this is this is, um, like I said, something you want to do with hair that you don't mind cutting and stuff like this. Some hair, leftover hair. Sometimes you buy hair, you get a sew in, or you make a wig, you still have a little bit left. This is why you save your hair, because you can use it for wig revamps and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna show you all how to thread a needle, and I'm gonna be using a straight needle. All right, so what you wanna do is get you some black thread. You can find this thread at the beauty supply store. It's not special, but it's um, not the type of thread that you use to sew clothing. I will say that. Now, this end is kind of ragged, which is gonna make it hard. What you may wanna do is just take your scissors and kind of thin, do like a thin cut. And what that's gonna do is gonna make it a little bit easier to get that in to your needle. So, you wanna take your needle, your um, thread. I, sometimes I put my mouth on mine, I'm just being honest with you. And there's a hole in the needle. Can y'all see? There. Hole. You're going to put the thread through that hole. 
And like I said, something about angling your cut and putting your mouth on it makes it go straight through and it's easier. So now what you do when you thread your needle is you bring it down all the way through, but you wanna make two sides. You see that I have this in my hand, I'm making two sides like that. They're lined up and then at the bottom of it, you can tie your knots. Now you wanna tie a knot, I would say, if you a beginner like me, you do it four times. I'm just looping it, doing it again. Uh-oh, doing it again. And this is with fake nails on too, so I'm proud of myself, honey, cause these fake nails, I don't know how them girls do the long nails cause I can't do nothing with them, long nails. And I'm just tying knots through the through the thread. And see, this time I did four. And I'm doing one more. You could do it six times, it really don't matter, but you wanna make sure it's in there to where it's not going to be easy to get out. Okay, so this is what I'm working with. It's not as long, it's like arm length. All right, so I know it's twice, and now I'm lining it up with the track. That's on the actual wig. I'm going to sew this first one through the elastic band of the wig. And the reason why I'm choosing this location is because I feel like it's going to reinforce it. Now for all the other elastic bands that are in this wig, I'm not going to do that. Because I don't want to change the, um, the flexibility of the wig or where the wig moves. And, um, you know, sometimes when you do that, it will. So you don't want to do that. So I'm just trying to keep this through as carefully as possible. And just pull that thing through without causing problems. It can be difficult. I'm, I'm trying to tell you it's difficult sometimes, but it's doable.
It's done. It's gonna be 20 minutes, y'all. Oh my gosh. I I'm so freaking slow. I am so slow at this point. But it gets better with practice. It does. It, it gets better with practice. I'm about to cut this string right. Yeah. Alright. All that moving around and slanging and langing. Slanging and langing. All right, my comb. You're gonna comb out with the track that you added in. You're gonna turn your flat iron back on. You're just gonna flat iron it so it can blend. It's just, it just works wonders when you add a, a track right on top of another track. It look better. So you just go in and you wanna blend that out. You can use the chase method if you wish. Don't flat iron like me, because that was a fail. And like me, because that was a fail. That was a fail. But you're just trying to blend it, okay? That's all you're trying to do is, is get it to blend. But good human hair is like wavy. So you wanna take your iron and just kind of press those curls out. Okay, so now I'm um, I'm just going through to see like if I'm gonna add any more tracks to the hair. Um, I am going to put uh, the hair over the track that I just added in to show you guys that it's not visible and it's not bulky because we sewed directly on the line with the track. So this is a track. This is where I added the track here. You see that? And now you cannot see through this wig anymore just from adding two tracks. You cannot see through the wig. I'm taking it off of my stand. 
stand just to show you. Before, you could see through the wig, but by adding two tracks, you cannot see through it anymore. So that's just to show you how much, if you just add a track sometimes, or two tracks, it can really make a, a big difference in a unit and making it just look fuller and making it look better um, because it, it just blends much better. So, and then the other thing I want y'all to see is that you cannot see the tracks that I added. Like, what track? You see what I'm saying? It's not obvious that I added a track because of the placement. Placement is really important. You have to look at the way the wig is already constructed and where it makes sense. Like, up at the top of this unit, it really didn't make sense to add hair with needle and thread because this was where the... The um, closure was, so it probably wouldn't have looked right. So now I'm just gonna put it on my head. Just to see how it looks on. And I mean, probably just look fuller cause it was looking thin before. Now it just looks a little bit fuller. Ooh, this, uh, sorry for the angle though. But yeah, like I added the hair in just to give it the illusion of fullness. And I probably am going to add some hair to the back, but it's probably not going to look really full. Because the hair itself is not that full. Josiah, I'm still recording up here. That's too loud. So like... It just looks better. Like before, it was looking like it needed some hair. And it looks better already. I think I I do want to add some more hair to the back of the unit. I added hair here because like it's like this is a layered wig. I did not layer this wig. The wig came with its own little layers in it. But. By adding that hair, it just made this look more natural and it made it look less like thin. Cause she was giving me very thin vibes before. Like I'm just gonna show you, it's full from beginning to end in the back. I promise you up, um, and it's, it's full like all the way through. The density looks right. But as you get towards that middle track, it's not full. So th that's what you wanna look for. You wanna look for gaps. It don't make sense to sew it where it's not thin. Like this is a track that's like there. This one is not thin. So I'm not gonna sew it where it's not thin. As soon as I notice where it started to get thin, that's where you wanna sew your track. And for me, it looks like it's about mid back of the wig is where it's like, wait a minute. Is where I finally found a gap. Cause like I was saying, it wasn't as thin in the back. But right here is where you can kind of see through the track. You see that where you can see through it. So that's where I'm going to add some hair. Um, doing the same process that I showed y'all in a previous clip. I recommend if you're doing wig constructions for yourself or for others regularly, you might as well invest in some sort of um, wig head for like $40 or $20, $29 on Amazon because you, yeah, you can use styrofoam head for $3, but it's flimsy. It keeps falling and it can be aggravating to deal with. For me, it's been kind of annoying. So, this is going to probably be close to my last one. Not really. But, like, this is something that I recommend that y'all do at home when you buy wigs online and you know the hair is good but it's kind of thin like this is what you can do so that you don't have to send it back if the hair is good
Now I'm about to do the fold over method because I don't want to cut the hair um, that I've been sewing. So I'm going to go back through the wig and um, bend this corner. Thank you. 